So let's look at the, the, the quadrant three step. First part is hardwiring. Most of us think of hardwiring as disk assessments. Are you, uh, you know, extrovert, introvert, people-centered, task-centered? We'll look at that second. The first one is ability hardwiring. Uh, this is for you as an individual. You can do this as an organization too. How many people here have taken the Highlands Abilities Battery? Has anybody? All right, it's a three hour test and it's called a battery for a good reason. My mom took it when I was getting certified 15 years ago and she called me up and said, Mark, I felt more mentally alert after 36 hours of labor with you and nothing to show for it. I'm a C-section baby. Uh, then I did after this three hour test. What this does, most of the other tests are based on what your perceptions are. Do you, would you rather go to a movie or would you rather stay home and read a, read a book? This test is a bunch of corporate tests that force you to do seemingly stupid things under time pressure. So you have a picture. Um, it's sort of like the highlights. Some of it's like the highlights uh, books you used to get in the dentist's office, or some of us used to get. Um, there's a picture of stuff, and then they remove that picture, and they put another picture with some of the stuff removed. And you have to see which parts of the ones removed. They'll give you a jumble of letters and line it up with a uh, word, and then they'll shift it around, and you have to connect the dots. Uh, they'll give you dots on a folded piece of paper, and then they'll give you dots in the paper, paper open, and you have to know which of the dots, which diagram shows where the dots really would be if the dots were like this when it was folded, if there were holes stuck in there. Really stupid things. One of the tests is, uh, well, one of the reasons this tests like this were done is hotels, like what we're in. They needed housekeepers that could walk across the threshold and immediately see, oh, that lamp, that's two inches too far to the left. They could have checklists, but they don't have time to go through the checklist. We can do all of these tasks. We can do just about anything that comes at us if we are given enough time and enough education. But there are certain things that come really wired to us. So the Highlands Ability Battery helps show that. The first four uh, strengths that it identifies are your personal style. The next five are drivers where a lot of stress happens. If you're over a certain point and you're not getting that exhibited in your work, you're, that can be an underlying cause of stress that you just don't understand. Uh, and then, then the, the final 10 are all environmental things. They're how you learn and how you interact with people, what makes you unique as you're doing, going about your work as fundraising or leading. Um, it wasn't for nonprofit fundraisers, but it works really well. So knowing, like, the reason that I, I, sorry, I took so long on this. The reason this is important for me as a, the head of a foundation for a hospital was that I found out I do paperwork pretty slowly because there's a typing speed challenge and then there's an accuracy challenge. <laughs> Not only were you fast, but actually did you type the right things that you were supposed to type. Um, so I was given the weird task of every board meeting every month, I had the privilege of writing the minutes. What is that? We had a secretary. I don't know what his job was. Like, shouldn't he be doing that? But I was doing it, and my CFO, bless his heart, said um, that my writing the minutes allows me to shape the narrative. I can have the integrity of keeping everything that was discussed up there, but I could err on the side of the things I knew would actually move the foundation forward. That helped a little bit, but every month I had to remind myself because I had a 45-minute board meeting, and then I had to block out three to four hours to do the minutes. Because if I didn't do the minutes that morning, yeah, you guys know, it's not gonna, it's the next, there will be no minutes for the next board meeting, the first agenda of approving the minutes. Where are they? Well, they're still last month, in last month's notes, they're not there yet. So with the Highlands Ability Battery, it just gave me freedom to realize I'm an expensive, time-consuming paperwork person, but I just have to do that. And it, for those of you, we all have to do it, because our databases need to be updated after our visits too. So it's good to know that. Um, but that's not the only type of hardwiring. The next type of hardwiring is the one that we're most familiar with, which is our behaviors. Uh, it, the one that I like the most is, is DISC. It's been around for about three millennia. Uh, it's the sanguine, caloric, melancholy, phlegmatic. The Greeks used to think we had different levels of liquids in our bodies that made us act differently. Um, why I love, is anybody, everybody familiar with DISC? Okay, not really, some of you. All right, so extroverts talk fast and they don't know what they're thinking until they've said it, they're verbal processors. Introverts have this amazing ability to think and then speak. It's shocking to us extroverts. <laughs> most of us, if we were to move into the quadrants in the room, most of us in the typical AFP conference are on the extrovert people-centered side. People-centered people care about people. They wanna know, you know, how are you doing? How are the kids? They remember relationships. Task-centered people, want the job to get done. Uh, and sometimes there are task center people that are fundraisers. You can be a good fundraiser in any, any part of the spectrum, but it's imp more important with your donors and maybe your executive director or your board. 
I'm working with a CEO of a, a, a large non, a PBS NPR nonprofit, and um, it turns out one of his board members is very task-centered in a way that he's not. Um, he has the most stress because it's a, the quadrant opposite him. And so we have to go through on our coaching calls about, okay, so how are you going to address your board chair's concerns? Because he's full of concerns. Um, and they're not necessarily bad, but they, they are killjoys to his, this extroverted people-centered person. So knowing your behaviors is important because you can see how you show up in the world to other people. And you can also see, you can respond likewise to them. If you're at a donor meeting and somebody's talking slowly and asking about how the kids are or how the family is or how the, the people in your organization are, you might know that they're more reserved people-centered. And so you might take a step back if you're a fast talker and just tone it down a bit to try to speak the dialect of the donor. Um, if you're more naturally reserved, you know that it's gonna take more effort to get out to meet donors, but you have to do that. We have to see donors in their natural habitat. That's where the magic happens. So you know that you're gonna to have to build some, some foundations around that. Uh, Islamic Relief USA's founder, I did this with their team in LA, and he was the only one on the introvert side of the, of the staff. And the extroverts tried to keep pulling him over because they thought that it was bad that he was an introvert, which it's not. Introverts can be very social, and he was at every event. He just needed three days in between where the extroverts wanted, wow, it was a great event, let's do it again, woohoo, let's have another fundraising event the next day. He needed three days in his apartment by himself with no, no interruptions to try to recharge. So you can know that with your behaviors, as you know, your behavior hardwiring. And then the third one is the motivations. Has anybody here taken the Enneagram or worked with the Enneagram at all? A few of you. Um, okay, 30 years I've been using this thing called the Enneagram, and it's only in the last year and a half that I brought it into my practice with, with leaders. What is Fascinating about the Enneagram, we don't know where exactly where it comes from. I heard it was from a Sufi uh, wisdom tradition. We look at, if you look at the Homer's Odyssey, the nine places he stopped on his journey really resemble the nine uh, types of human beings that the Enneagram brings out. If you look at Dante's Inferno, the nine levels of hell closely resemble the nine types in the Enneagram. What the Enneagram posits is that we all, we, we all learn that we, what we bring to the table isn't enough by our, in early in our childhood, that we need to present as something else. And so that's our personality. And there's usually about nine types of personality that nine stories people tell themselves of how they can be successful and interact with the world. There are head-centered people that are three of the types, three of the types are heart-centered people, and three of the types are gut-centered people. Why I love this, uh, if you're looking for a book, Beatrice Chestnut's Nine Types of Leaders is probably the best book because it's all about working in nonprofits and for-profits and how leaders bring themselves and show up at work based on their motivations. If you looked only at behaviors, you could see um, goal setting, driven, accomplishment people, and three different people, but they may be operating from three entirely different stories. The first one may just be showing up and setting goals and accomplishing them because he really believes he has to be successful in everything he does. If he's a failure, that's a moral flaw. So he, ha he wants to be successful, and so winning is his thing. The, the second person, she may just want new excitement and new, new experiences and, and trying all new things, and that makes her accomplish goals because she's trying new things. She's not there when the confetti, confetti drops and the success happens because she's already on to the next thing. And the third person, she might be getting these goals done because her story is, I have to protect the people around me, my staff, my family, the people we serve. I have to protect them from bullying. And so, the, that type of person shows up and tries to put parameters around people so that the, her stuff isn't harmed. Uh, and so they're all showing fa aggressive goal setting, goal getting sort of activity, but they're from very different uh, stories. So hardwiring is just one part of quadrant three, but it helps you figure out how is it that I interact and operate and with the world.